I'm reading from this book, the history of redemption, which is a compilation of several books, and I'm reading from the book, The Desire of Ages. In this video series, as I already said, I basically want to inspire people to believe more strongly in Jesus Christ as their personal saviour. And in my own personal experience, through reading the book, The Desire of Ages, that has transformed the way I think of Christ. So, I'm going to read out selected chapters of it, selected paragraphs. If you want to find out exactly which paragraphs I'm reading and which chapters, then look in the video description and I'll detail it there. Let us begin. Lord God, when I say I, I pretty feel like this message is too much for me to give people, but Lord, I must give it to them. I pray, Lord, please, that you would anoint me and that your spirit will be upon every mind and you would help me say these words. Amen. I am going to read to you from this book. And the theme of this entire video series, as I've said before, is centred on the trial and the crucifixion of Christ. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Judas the betrayer was present at the sacramental service. He received from Jesus the emblems of his broken body and his spilled blood. He heard the words, This do in remembrance of me. And sitting there in the very presence of the Lamb of God, the betrayer brooded upon his own dark purposes and cherished sullen, revengeful thoughts. At the feet washing, Christ had given convincing proof that he understood the character of Judas. Ye are not all clean, John 13, 11, he said. These words convinced the false disciple that Christ read his secret purpose. Now Christ spoke out more plainly. As they were seated at the table, he said, looking upon his disciples, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Even now, the disciples did not suspect Judas, but they saw that Christ appeared greatly troubled. A cloud settled over them all, a premonition of some dreadful calamity, the nature of which they did not understand. As they ate in silence, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. At these words, amazement and consternation seized them. They could not comprehend how any one of them could deal treacherously with their divine teacher. For what cause could they betray him? And to who? Whose heart could give birth to such a design? Surely not one of the favoured twelve who had been privileged above all others to hear his teachings, 
who had shared his wonderful love, and for whom he had shown such great regard by bringing them into close communion with himself. As they realized the import of his words, and remembered how true his sayings were, fear and self-distrust seized them. They began to search their own hearts, to see if one fought against their master were harboured there. With the most painful emotion, one after another inquired, Lord, is it I? But Judas sat silent. John, in deep distress, at last inquired, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. The disciples had searched one another's faces closely as they asked, Lord, is it I? And now the silence of Judas drew all eyes to him. Amid the confusion of questions and expressions of astonishment, Judas had not heard the words of Jesus in answer to John's question. But now, to escape the scrutiny of the disciples, he asked as they had done, Master, is it I? Jesus solemnly replied, Thou hast said. In surprise and confusion at the exposure of his purpose, Judas rose hastily to leave the room. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Night it was to the traitor, as he turned away from Christ into the outer darkness. Until this step was taken, Judas had not passed beyond the possibility of repentance. But when he left the presence of his Lord and his fellow disciples, the final decision had been made. He had passed the boundary line. A little before the Passover, Judas had renewed his contract with the priests to deliver Jesus into their hands. Then it was arranged that the Saviour should be taken at one of his resorts for meditation and prayer. Since the feast at the house of Simon, Judas had had opportunity to reflect upon the deed which he had covenanted to perform. But his purpose was unchanged. For thirty pieces of silver, the price of a slave, he sold the Lord of glory to ignominy and death. Judas had naturally a strong love for money, but he had not always been corrupt enough to do such a deed as this. He had fostered the evil spirit of avarice until it had become the ruling motive of his life. The love of mammon overbalanced his love for Christ. Through becoming the slave of one vice, he gave himself to Satan, to be driven to any lengths in sin. Even after he had twice pledged himself to betray the Saviour, there was opportunity for repentance. At the Passover supper, Jesus proved his divinity by revealing the traitor's purpose. He tenderly included Judas in the ministry to the disciples, but the last appeal of love was unheeded. Then the case of Judas was decided, and the feet that Jesus had washed went forth to the betrayer's work. Judas reasoned that if Jesus was to be crucified, the event must come to pass. His own act in betraying the Saviour would not change the result. If Jesus was not to die, it would only force him to deliver himself. At all events, Judas would gain something by his treachery. He counted that he had made a sharp bargain. 
in betraying his Lord. Judas did not, however, believe that Christ would permit himself to be arrested. In betraying him, it was his purpose to teach him a lesson. He intended to play a part that would make the Saviour careful thenceforth to treat him with due respect. But Judas knew not that he was giving Christ up to death. How often, as the Saviour taught in parables, the scribes and Pharisees had been carried away with his striking illustrations. How often had they pronounced judgment against themselves? Often when the truth was brought home to their hearts, they had been filled with rage and had taken up stones to cast at him. But again and again, he had made his escape. Since he had escaped so many snares, thought Judas, he certainly would not allow himself to be taken. Judas decided to put the matter to the test. If Jesus really was the Messiah, the people for whom he had done so much would rally about him and would proclaim him king. This would forever settle many minds that were now in uncertainty. Judas would have the credit of having placed the king on David's throne, and this act would secure to him the first position next to Christ in the new kingdom. The false disciple acted his part in betraying Jesus. In the garden, when he said to the leaders of the mob, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. Matthew 26, 48. He fully believed that Christ would escape out of their hands. Then if they should blame him, he could say, Did not I tell you to hold him fast? Judas beheld the captors of Christ acting upon his words, bind him firmly. In amazement, he saw that the Saviour suffered himself to be led away. Anxiously, he followed him from the garden to the trial before the Jewish rulers. At every moment, he looked for him to surprise his enemies by appearing before them as the Son of God and setting at naught all their plots and power. But as hour after hour went by, and Jesus submitted to all the abuse heaped upon him, a terrible fear came to the traitor that he had sold his master to his death. I'm basically reading the sections to do with the Last Supper, the Betrayal, the Garden of Gethsemane, the Trial in the Sanhedrin, the Trial with Pilate, the Trial with Herod, the Second Trial with Pilate, the Crucifixion, the Resurrection. Those are the portions that I want to focus on so that we focus on the closing scenes of the life of Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness, get a witness, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, oh, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, oh, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, get a witness, get a witness, can I get a witness, oh, who will be a, who will be a witness? Be a witness for my Lord. Who will be a witness for my Lord? Who will be a witness for my Lord? Who will be a witness for my Lord? My soul is a witness for my Lord. I will be a witness for my Lord. I will be a witness for my Lord. I will be a witness for my Lord. My soul is a witness for my Lord. There was a man of the Pharisees. His name was Nicodemus and he didn't believe. The same came to Christ by night. Wanted to be taught out of human sight. Nicodemus was a man who desired to know how a man could be.
be born when he is old. Christ told Nicodemus as a friend, Man, you must be born again. He said, Marvel not and be wise. Repent, believe and be baptized. Then you will be a witness for my Lord. You will be a witness for my Lord. You will be a witness for my Lord. Soul is a witness. You, you, you. Now Daniel was a Hebrew child. He went to pray to his Lord for a while. The king and at once for Daniel did send. They put him right down in the lion's den. God sent his angels, the lions, for to keep. And Daniel lay down and he went to sleep. My soul is a witness for my Lord. 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 Oh. Can I get a witness, get a witness, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, oh, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, oh, get a witness, can I get a witness, get a witness, get a witness, get a witness, can I get a witness, oh, who will be a, who will be a 